shame. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Self Love Monday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. Now, this topic is something I felt is that we need to have because if you recognize that you do this to people, you need to understand where it's coming from and you need to start to eliminate or at least try to get as much of it out of your life as possible. And at the same time, understanding when people try to shame you, under now you'll understand where they're coming from and allow it to just roll down your back. So before I actually get into the shame, let's talk about what shame isn't. The example, um, let's talk about embarrassment. Now, it's not the same as embarrassing, embarrassment because I remember one day while I was in college, I'm walking and it's snowing. I was in, uh, went to the University of Colorado and um, it was snowing outside, so snow's all over the ground. But this particular day, I'm thinking I'm the man. I got uh, my my little uh, crayon shoes. Look it up if you've never known what they are. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, those that know, I just told them myself. But there's some crayon shoes. And then I had on my, you know, my nice slacks, had on a trench coat, had the scarf around my neck, had on my little apple hat, had it kind of leaning to the side. So, you know, I thought I was the man. And so I'm strolling to class, you know, trying to be like I'm Mr. It. Lo and behold, those crayons didn't grip too good in that snow. Hit, hit a solid piece of ice, kapow, fell flat on my butt. And I looked around instantly. And of course, there's a lot of people walking around because I'm headed to class. I jumped straight up real quick like nothing happened. You know how we do that and looking around. You know, people saw and I, I saw people trying not to laugh or whatever because they didn't know if I was well or not. But um, that's embarrassment because it's something that, you know, people are going to laugh about it. It's not an attack on your character. It's not an attack on your integrity. It's none of that. It's just it's an embarrassing moment. You know what I mean? Something you wish didn't happen, but it's it doesn't it doesn't affect anything except you just embarrassed a little bit. Humiliation. It's definitely not humiliation. You may have heard this story before, but I remember back in high school, um, there was a teacher that came into one of my classes. Now, first understand, I moved from Los Angeles where it was an all black community and I moved to Orange County where it was all white. Um, and when I say that, believe me, me and my sister made it a grand total of three blacks in our school. So yes, that means there was only one guy there black when we got there. So anyway, in my class, I did a project. My teacher was pretty proud of it. And then one of the other teachers happened to come into the class. And, and my teacher decided to share my project with him And because he's like, I've never given a perfect score. And I mean, look at this. This is incredible. I mean, and the other teacher looked at me and said, he can read. And the other teacher, you know, he knew what he was saying, just as I knew what he was saying. But he just said, oh, yeah, yeah, he's it, shoot. Matter of fact, he's one of, if not my, my top student. And um, that was designed to humiliate me, designed to destroy. The humiliation comes into play is because it's something that you know you didn't even deserve. So in my particular case, I didn't let it affect me that way. So I wasn't humiliated. I wasn't even embarrassed, which he was hoping that he did that. Folks, you know if he said it loud enough for me to hear it, other students heard it, but nobody commented about it. Everybody just let it go. And um, But the bottom line, that is humiliation. The attempt on humiliation, I should say, in his particular case. Now, that will take us to what we are talking about, which is shame. He should have felt shame for what he attempted to do which was to humiliate. Shame is something that is affecting your character and your integrity. It is something that you take personal. It is something that will take you into the depths of depression because it's something that you feel you, you know you shouldn't have done it. 
You don't want nobody else to know that you did it. And you're shamed and you never want to share it with anyone. And unfortunately, sometimes those things do get out. And then that's, it's really a lot of shame attached to it because now you feel like everybody knows this. Now you, you are, you know what I'm saying? You're just tortured from this particular point from an emotional perspective. And the reason I'm saying the guy, sh it, it should have felt shame is because just what he did, because he tried to humiliate, he tried to embarrass. Um, that was his intent. And, and, and that is shame on him from my perspective. The way I was able to see it, because I, I have always had a very high self-esteem and I was able to take what he tried to do. And my first thought was, wow, some people really are ignorant. Now, for those of you, again, when I say the word ignorant, because some people go, oh, that's kind of strong. Ignorant means you don't know. For those that don't know, that's what it means. In our society, of course, a lot of people, if you tell them they're ignorant, they, they feel like you're trying to attack them. And sometimes when people say it, that is because they are trying to attack you. But the actual definition of it is just means you don't know. You're not aware. So in his particular case, I, I chalked that up to he doesn't even understand how dumb or how stupid it was what he just said. He's, again, ignorant to his conversation. Now, a person that doesn't feel shame for doing something like that. I hope the pain that does come from shame, which is why the, the purpose of this conversation is so that you have shame, you shake it off um, because that way you can move on with your life. But in, in a person's case like that, that should have shame and doesn't, I hope the pain that's attached to shame will show up in their life. Now, why do I say that? Some people go, ooh, that's vengeance, Ron. That's not. No, 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 no. The reason I say that is because if he's okay with that, he feels good about what he does. Remember what we said, everything in life, we do it for one or two reasons, to avoid pain or to gain pleasure. So if that's pleasurable, what is he going to do? He's going to do that to more people and, and make those statements more and more and more and more because there's nothing to keep him because there's no pain attached to make him sway the other way. So that's the reason I'm saying the, the pain hits him so that hopefully one day it will wake him up and he can see, as they say, the error of your ways. <laughs> so I personally have forgiven him for what he attempted to do. And the reason I'm sharing this, again, is one so we can identify what shame really is so that you understand if you've ever done anything that you are ashamed of, something that you would be, you know what I'm saying, humiliated and everything, if it showed up in the papers or if your family found out, if your spouse found out, and you're feeling, it's something in you that you're not releasing, you have to because you have to get at peace in your life. And stuff like that, shame, it will keep you from ever being fully fulfilled and fully engaged in life. And that's really the idea of everything, as you guys know, I share, is to get you to truly engage in life. Shame will keep you from that because it's always going to be that thought that's always in your mind. And you guys know we've talked about the exercise of looking in the mirror and doing that it definitely for 21 days until it becomes a habit, but you can't do it every day for the rest of your life. But you look in the mirror and that's when you're able to say, Ron, I forgive you for. And in this gentleman's case, hopefully he was able to have that conversation and tell himself, I forgive you for what you said. But here's what I've learned from that. And hopefully, hopefully he's learned and he's gone on to do some, some powerful things. Not out of guilt, but from a knowledge perspective that now he's out doing better things instead of out trying to shame people. So that's why we talk about in life, the whole idea is, is when things happen, learn from them and move forward. That's again why you guys have heard me say I never talk about people failing. I never talk about, you know, as far as failure. I don't talk about that because I don't believe there is such thing. I just believe um, life happens on purpose. Again, we're talking about uh, perfection. 
Um, the reason I say you are perfect and everything is perfect is because if you do the same thing, you do it the exact same way. Same ingredients, same, like I use the example of a cake. If you use the same ingredients, same temperature, same pan with the dent in it, same everything, you're going to keep getting the exact same tasting cake with a dent in it. Right? So that means it's perfect. You know the perfect ingredients in order to get that particular cake. What you get to decide is if you like that particular cake, and if you don't, now it's time to change the ingredients. And if I don't want the dip, it's time to change the pan. Does that make sense? That's why I don't look at life as failure or any of the stuff that the world keeps trying to teach you. It's like everything is perfect. And that's why I said when, when people say I'm a perfectionist and they look for things that's wrong, I'm like, you're not. You're an imperfectionist because you're always looking to find something wrong. A perfectionist understands just what I said. They understand that everything is perfect. They look for perfection. They understand that everything flows and everything goes exactly the way it's supposed to based on the ingredients that was put in. We just get to decide as human beings. That's why, you know, when I even talk about dating, when I, when I was talking about you put together the list and all that kind of stuff, this is not about you changing people. This is about you being clear where you're going and you get to look at people. And that's why I said you accept people as they are because you get to see the way they carry themselves and you get to decide on whether you want to be in a relationship with them. It's not to say they're a failure. It's not to say that they're no good and, and they're all the other tags that people like to put. It's just saying based on my life, my desires, the direction I'm going, my character, my integrity, we don't match. Got it? So let's cover this. Where does this shame actually come from to begin with? I know you guys, if you've been listening to my work, you already know. It's the same comment I use. There are two ways to build the tallest building. One, you build the tallest building. The second one, you tear down all the buildings around you so that you are the tallest building. Guess what? Most people live in the second one. And that is the reason that people will try to shame you because of the fact is their building, which is themselves, is not tall. They don't feel good about the person they see in the mirror. So by shaming you, it allows them to feel better about themselves. And in most people's cases, it's just a temporary because later you feel bad about the fact that you shamed other people. So you even feel worse. But that's where it comes from. And the reason I'm saying we got to recognize it is because if you're shaming people, guess what? You're tearing down the buildings that are around you so that you're tall. And that's the reason I started off saying, if you recognize you do it, it's time to work on eliminating it. Now, as human beings, we slip. I understand every now and then it's going to happen. Recognize it when it does and go correct it whether it's go correct it with the person that you shamed, if it's someone else you shamed, or forgive yourself if you're shaming yourself because you have to be able to do that in order to move forward in your life. And not only that, when you learn how to forgive yourself, and again, as I've said when I talked to them earlier, forgive yourself for shaming if you've learned the lesson. But if you didn't learn a lesson and, oh, man, I forgive me, and you're still doing it like I talked about the teacher to shame me, and you're still doing it, my wish is that the pain that comes with it will find you. And again, the reason that I say that is not because I'm vengeful. It's because feeling good is why you continue to do it. We do things for one or two reasons, void pain and gain pleasure. So we already know the pleasure is not going to cause you, if you're a shamer, to change. So the only thing that we can hope for is that pain will enter you, enter your life, enter your thought process to where you realize what it is that you're doing and that you change your way. First, forgive yourself and then change what you're doing. And then you can turn around as we talk about people wanting to grow and then contribute. Once you've grown in that particular area, you start to recognize it. 
And then you start to work with other people. I remember I used to be one of those people like even cracking jokes. I was subject to say anything, whatever just popped in my mind and not really thinking about it. And uh, my mom used to get on me about that all the time. She'd be like, Ronnie, you can't say that. You can't just say whatever's on your mind. But for me, well, if you know the four personalities that I talk about, my team, my technical side, those are people that kind of feel like they're telling it like it is. At least that's the, the justification for just being jerks. Um, I didn't realize I was being a jerk. I didn't realize I'm just, I did think I was just keeping it real. I'm just like, you shouldn't be so sensitive. You should, folks, some of you just heard what I just said and that's your thought process. Well, I, people better get tougher skin. No, you need to recognize when you're being a jerk. You need to recognize if what you're saying is actually helping people or not. Just because you said I'm speaking, I'm speaking the truth or I'm speaking what's on my mind. If it's not designed to help people and move them forward, keep it to yourself. Because at that point, you are being a jerk. Um, because the whole idea, again, here is, is, and again, with everything I share, is we're all here to help each other enjoy this journey we call life. And so the things that I go through and I, I experience, I want to come back. And that's really the whole, again, the purpose of my videos and stuff is to share the things that I've learned, share the things that I've gone through. And hopefully that, that, that some of that information you can take and you can use and the stuff that, that, that doesn't sync with you and let it roll off your back. As I've, I've you guys have heard me say, that's why my model isn't ain't right and wrong. It's my opinion, folks. I'm giving my opinions. These things aren't necessarily right. They just work for me. So, anyway, the shame, and that's the reason I wanted to have that conversation, um, because again, I know someone who's going through that right now, and we had the conversation, and I and I know what it does, how it tears down your spirit, and I just felt it's something that I know there's a lot of people out there that that's living in a shamed life and folks you got to set yourself free forgive yourself look in the mirror learn the lesson though it ain't just about forgiving you it's learning the lesson so that you can go out and and and, and live a fulfilled life but more importantly you can come back and give that lesson and help others get out of the pain that they're living in so anyway get rid of the shame and as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong, it is my opinion. Now, for those of you that we talk on uh, Relationship Thursday, I'll talk to you on Thursday. For those of you on Self Love Monday, I'll talk to you on Left Monday. By the way, I am in the process. I just started uh, last night. I'm getting ready to work on my next book, which is the, and I've mentioned it before, about the uh, 21 Days for Self Love. I haven't decided the exact title, but that's really what it's going to be geared around because as you guys have heard me say before, it takes like 21 days to create a habit. I mean, impact, you can change something immediately right on the spot. But if, if the impact is not there, just consistency over a 21-day period, you can create a new habit. So the whole idea behind this is to get people from where they are to at the 21 days to be able to really, truly love the person they see in the mirror. So I'm working on that. Give me feedback, things that you'd like cover, things that maybe that are that are affecting your life at this point that you need, you want to have addressed inside the book where you're hurting and you're looking for that self-love. And if you want to send it anonymous and, and, and tell me some, some details on what's going on, that's good too. Um, because the more that I get, the more... I can put in the book and the more people we can actually help. And as you guys know, that's what I'm all about. It's all about giving and helping others. So again, as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.